It is claimed that large amounts of arms and ammunition have been discovered on a truck taking aid to Syria. It is reported that following a tip-off to the Hatay Provincial Gendarmerie, a truck belonging to the IHH, Humanitarian Aid Foundation, was stopped near the Güzelce Gendarm Post in Kırıkan District. It is reported that a person in a vehicle claimed to be from the MIT, Turkish National Intelligence Organization, and did not want the vehicle to be searched. However, during a search of the vehicle, record parts, weapons and ammunition were found secreted amongst foodstuffs. While it is not known whether the armaments were seized after a report had been drawn up, the vehicle continued towards the city of Kilis at around 9 p.m. Although it is claimed that three people were detained, this has yet to be confirmed by the authorities. The IHHH has denied claims that the vehicle belonged to the foundation. On 7th of November 2013, the police raided the Metal Senai factory in Adana following a tip-off that a large shipment of drugs was to be transported, finding 935 rocket shells in a truck. Many Kurdish civilians kidnapped by Salafist Islamic State of Iraq and Al-Sham ISIS linked to Al-Qaeda groups in last day of 2013 in Aleppo. Al-Qaeda groups in retreat after suffering heavy defeats have stepped up their attacks on civilians. The Al-Qaeda groups launched attacks on the Haidaria neighborhood of Aleppo on the evening of 31st of December, taking many Kurdish civilians hostage. Local sources report that gangs affiliated to ISIS have continued their attacks on the Haidaria neighborhood yesterday and today. In recent period, Salafist groups linked to Al-Qaeda taken many Kurds hostage in the Manbij, Jarablus, Al-Bab and Azaz areas. The Syrian government has made an official complaint to the United Nations Security Council alleging that Turkey and other countries is supporting groups like Al-Qaeda. Syrian government officials sent a letter to the UN General Secretary Ban Ki-moon claiming that the Turkish government allows terrorists to cross into Syria has been made public. Syria's permanent representative to the UN, Bashar Jafari, said this was a blatant violation of Security Council resolutions. Bashar Jafari said the Turkish government permits armed groups to cross its borders in the Bab al Hawa, Fauz, Ain al Baida, Kerbet al Joz, Reyhanlı, Ghazali, and Atima areas. The Turks are supporting groups that carry out daily attacks on the Syrian people, state institutions, and infrastructure. According to Jafari, the armed groups do not hesitate to attack places of worship considered sacred by Muslims and Christians, diplomatic representations and even children in schools and school vehicles. He added that the Damascus government considers Ankara to have a direct influence on such attacks. Syria's permanent representative Jaferi claims the Turkish government admits citizens of different nationalities from countries such as Libya, Kazakhstan and Chechnya and allows them to cross into Syria. He also submitted a list of 546 Yemeni fighters who had crossed the Turkey-Syria border as an appendix to the letter. YPG forces non-stop continue their operations against Al-Qaeda-linked terrorist groups in Rojava. They surround the Tilhamis, which is first place those terrorist groups occupied in that area. The video shows YPG forces marching towards Tilhamis in an operation against Al-Qaeda forces in Hasakia region of western Kurdistan Rojava. The operation was initiated by YPG on 26 of December against Islamic State of Iraq and 11th Janhat al-Nusra and Ahrar al-Shaham Salafist terror groups. About 40 villages and the town of Talbarak have been liberated by the Kurdish forces during the first day of the operation, which YPG vowed to continue until Talhamas, the Al-Qaeda nerve center in the region is liberated. Local resources said that in a few days, Tilhamis will also capture by YPG forces after Tilkochar. Seven Syrian soldiers have been killed in clashes that broke out after an attack by Syrian regime forces on a YPG checkpoint in the city of Haseke. Local sources report that forces of the Baathist regime attacked a YPG checkpoint in Kalase, neighborhood of Haseke, on the evening of 31st of December. In clashes that broke out, when YPG units returned fire, it is reported that seven regime soldiers were killed and many wounded. 
one YPG fighter and one civilian also died. Also on the evening of 31st of December, regime forces attacked a Kurdish police Asayish post in the Til Hajar neighborhood. The regime forces were forced to retreat when the Asayish returned fire. Two members of the Asayish were wounded after the clashes. It is reported that the city is quiet on the first day of 2014. Many people died during aerial attacks by regime forces on Kurdish neighborhoods of Aleppo in December. Ilham Ahmed, a member of the Kurdish Supreme Council, said that they should not let the Geneva Conference to, to place an agreement between regime and opposition at the expense of the Kurdish people and stressed the need for cohesion in this regard the Kurds and to be the owner of one position. On the accession of Syrian Kurds National Council to the democratic self-governance, Ahmed said that they will determine their position within 15 days. Ilham Ahmed spoke about the meetings that were held between Rojava People's Assembly and Syrian Kurds National Councils in Hawler, capital city of Federal Kurdistan region, which started on 17th of December and lasted six days. Ahmed pointed out that the terms of their goal in meeting in Hawler was the formation of an independent delegation and joint participation in the Geneva Conference to and exit to the position of the Kurdish Joint Arena. Ahmed said the common position of the Kurds does not serve the demands of the forces that want to go to Geneva and said there are contradictions within the Syrian opposition, but did not solve these contradictions, cannot be held at Geneva Conference too. Should not turn the Geneva Conference to a place in line with the regime and opposition at the expense of Kurdish people. A delegation from the Democratic Union Party, PYD, headed by co-chair Salim Muslim, has met with Mr. Saad Biryani and Mr. Ahmed Hami, representatives of Patriotic Union of Kurdistan, in Austria last Tuesday. They discussed and talked about the current situation in Rojava and Syria, and also discussed about the project of the self-rule in Rojava. Biryani has confirmed his support for the Kurdish revolution in Syria and the project of self-rule for Rojava. Muslim emphasized the importance of the Kurdish unity in Syria and of attending Geneva too in a united Kurdish delegation independent from the others. Sadi Muslim also met a number of Kurdish and European politicians and personalities in Austria. Margaret Owen, a prominent human rights lawyer and director of Widows for Peace and Democracy organization, visited Rojava for a week-long solidarity and fact-finding mission. Owen spent eight days in Rojava, which is currently under the administration of a broad coalition of civil society and political organizations led by the Syrian Kurdish Democratic Union Party. The region was largely peaceful until clashes with Al-Qaeda-affiliated groups began this year and has seen a massive influx of Syrian internal refugees fleeing violence elsewhere in the country. Owen said Rojava demonstrates what is possible. I see the principle and ideology of Kurdish people, Abdullah Hujalan, for example, regarding the rights of minorities of women and the role of civil society in peace, building as a model, not just for Syria, but for all countries emerging from conflict, she underlined. Here is the detail of the interview with Owen. And the, through the PYG, the way everything is organized in Rojava, you do have women equal with men everywhere. And then you have the amazing YPJ, you have your young women there at the borders, you have equality of women with men everywhere, in every single level of every um, uh, aspect of this, uh, of in Rojava. And you are lucky because that's not true of many other countries. And I long to learn Kermanji to be able to speak with you in your own language. I also have an organization, an international organization, for which I founded and I am the director called Widows for Peace. And
and my organization has, uh, is, has uh, accreditation, it is accredited to the United Nations, so that I can bring the voices of widows in many different countries together in a strong voice, both to the United Nations and to my own government. In a statement on the occasion of the New Year, Peace and Democracy Party BDP and Kurdish Communities Union Executive Council KCK sent New Year messages. Kurdish Communities Union Executive Council Presidency underlined that 2014 would be the year of a total resistance against the war and slaughter policies of the AKP government. KCK said, our struggle for peace will continue in the new year and hope that 2014 will bring peace and democracy for people in Kurdistan, Turkey and Middle East. BDP co-chairs Gülten Kışanak and Selahattin Demirtaş have issued a new year message wishing for 2014 to be a year of peace and freedom. In its message, BDP underlined that 2014 will be a year of great struggle, both for democratization and the process of resolution, adding, our peoples will be the victors at the end of this struggle. In their message, the BDP co-chairs continued. 2013 saw significant developments for the world, first and foremost for the Turkey and the Middle East. We are entering the new year hoping for a fair, peaceful world. We wish the new year to bring all the peoples of the world peace, equality, freedom and happiness. 2013 has been a year of a turning point in the history of Turkey. People went out to streets in the period now called Gezi Resistance or June Uprising and opened a new path for the future of the country as it was symbolized in their slogans, this is only a beginning. They proved that they had a say in the transformation and change of the country. Having banned 1st of May demonstrations in Taksim Square to workers and laborers, AKP government ignited itself the protest against its governors. The ban of the demonstration in Taksim Square and fascist-like attitude of AKP created anger in millions and led to protests in mass demonstrations. The protest had turned into Gezi Park uprising and opened a new page in the history of protest and resistance in Turkey. Millions stood up and went out to streets in demonstrations between 31st of May and 10th of July in all around Turkey and Kurdistan against AKP governors. During the demonstrations which AKP tried to suppress with brutal police forces, seven were killed. 8,160 were injured, 13 lost their eyes because of gas bombs, 64 were heavily injured or lost their limbs. Etam Sarsuluk lost his life on 14th of June in the hospital when he was under treatment. On 2nd of June, Ali Ismail Korkmaz, a student of Eskishehir Anatolian University, was beaten with sticks by civil police. Having heavily injured, Ali Ismail Korkmaz lost his life on 12th of June in the hospital. Despite the camera's records of the event, there is still no case started against the police. While the murderer of Etam Sarusuluk, the police officer Ahmed Shahmaz Riha has been awarded by being appointed as a security staff. AKP government continued its attitude to protect the police even after the last murder in Antakya of Ahmed Atakan. There is even no investigation officially started for the slaughter of Zeynep, Aryashar, Abdullah Jomart, Ahmed Atakan and Medini Yildirim. AKP turned the country into a gas chamber. The whole country was turned into a gas chamber during the Gezi protest by the police force of AKP. According to Turkish Medicine Association, more than 500,000 gas shells were used by the police during the protests. Police fired the gas shells, purposely targeting. Police also pulled out guns from time to time and injured tens of protesters. 
having occupied Gezi Park for 12 days, tens of thousands turned the park into a heavenly place by their commune. On the other hand, AKP turned the police stations into torture places. AKP's attitudes towards women as well as come more into the open in police brutality. Women mostly were harassed by the police during the protest and forced a naked search under detention in the police stations. The latest development about the Gezi uprising has been the bill of indictment prepared by Istanbul Directory of Prosecutors, about 225 persons. According to the indictment, the protesters are alleged to be guilty of violation of demonstrating and meeting law, damage the sanctuary by making it dirty, using special clothes in improper ways, insulting police officers because of their tasks, undertaking public tasks unofficially. The bill of indictment has been sent to Istanbul 55th Civil Court. The protesters in Gezi uprising continued their actions through organizing forms in the parks. They have discussed how to continue and multiply the resistance by getting together in the sparks in many cities of the country during the evenings. AKP, on the other hand, continued the Gezi process by increasing oppression on Kurds and Alawith people. Today, Gezi resistance and protests continue against corruptions, which came into the open as a result of the power conflict between AKP and Gulen movement.